On today's episode, we're gonna be finally talking about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera combining with the DJI Ronin S and how it's working for gimbal uses. What is up everybody, James Jackson here. I'm back again with another video. First off, if you're new to the channel, I do video reviews on camera gears and also do tips and tricks in terms of filmmaking. So if you like the content that I'm making here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forward. So I wanted to just briefly go into some of the things on why this video took longer than probably it should have. Um, but first, as you can see right here, as I turn the gimbal, oop. but as you can see, as I sit this right here, the camera is balanced. It, right now it's just sort of leaning forward, but once I take this off, as you can see here, the camera's, pr as you can see here, the camera is pretty balanced, and it took a while to just sort of get to this point to have the camera set up. One of the things that has made it difficult, there's been multiple things on, on why it's been so difficult for me at least to sort of give a proper review or proper thoughts on you know, gimbal work with the pocket cinema camera and that's simply because of two things. Mainly trying to figure out how to get the balance of the camera the way I would like it to work and also some, some things I've had with the Ronin S itself. Um, so let me just go into some of the, the problems and the main issues and why the pocket cinema camera may be sometimes difficult to balance. The main reason is probably one of the big good features that a lot of people talk about is this screen right here. Uh, the screen is nice, big, and it's a great thing to have, especially when you're filming. The problem is, is that it shifts all the weight to the left side. Now, in most, um, in most video, uh, cameras, most of the weight is typically on the right side because that is typically where the battery is and the battery sort of adds weight to counter that out. Well, this is the complete opposite. And given the fact that how wide uh, the pocket camera is, it also forces you to shift the whole thing to the left in order to actually fit on the gimbal. So what you will see right here right now is I have the um, extension plate that actually comes with the Ronin S. So you don't have to buy this extra. This comes complete with the Ronin S, but I need to set it on the side and then shift it as far as possible to the left in order to avoid, put, in order to sort of get it onto the gimbal so it will fit. But because of that, it forces all the weight to the left side to the point where, as you can sort of see right here, it almost takes it takes almost the entire arm um, to fix it. Before, um, before I added the focus motor, it, I would basically have to have pushed this all the way to the to pretty much the extreme end. And it, it got to a point where I think I, I, I damaged the initial locking key, the locking knob here, because it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't stay tight. Um, now I got a newer one, so that one, so that was fixed. But that was a huge problem, was just how to offset that weight that's all on the left side. Um, I was hoping I can use a cage and, the, and use the cage to sort of balance it out so I can just, I wouldn't have to use the extension clip. However, it, it just made them more work because all of a sudden there's still more weight on this side because now you got the weight of the cage on the left side about pushing it that way. And then it, it eventually, even when I got the focus motor right here, uh, this was still not, it still wouldn't balance properly with it. Um, but now I've made a few changes. Uh, the big difference is the focus motor. Um, so I took the cage off. So but I, the focus motor helps so much that it, it, it helps balance it out. So now I can put weight on this side. So now I can offset the weight that all the weight that is being put on this side of the camera. And it helps such a big deal. Um, the other thing is I recently just acquired, uh, as you'll see, let me flip it the other way. As you'll see here, I have acquired a new lens. This is the, um, for now I'll call it Meek. Uh, the Meek 25, uh, great lens, uh, video coming about this lens 
relatively soon. So keep an eye out for that. So, but I love it because it's lightweight, it's sharp, it, and it has city gears. So I don't have to attach the the gears, the gear tighters to like a still lens. These are proper cinema glass lenses, and they were and it works perfectly with the focus motor. Uh, just FYI, when you are getting the focus motor. One of the problems it, you may come across is that sometimes it will uh, not calibrate. It will not fully calibrate. So what you may have to do is uh, you'll have to recalibrate. So every time you turn the Ronin off, I would say just recalibrate the the the, fo the focus lens, the focus motor. So it can just do go through its thing. It will. Because all of a sudden, for some reason, the calibration just goes off. And it's, it is kind of annoying that you have to do that every single time, but it works. So now, as I slowly, this is just how I said it, because I prefer how I said it. But as you will see here, I can now pull focus. Now, I will say one thing. When you're pulling focus, the motor is really loud. Now, if you pull it slowly, it's fine. It's relatively so it's relatively quiet, but as you'll see here, let me see if I can get this mic closer. So it is really really so it is really really uh loud, but as long as you're pulling like smoothly and quiet and not so fast, it will it's relatively quiet. But that's something just to keep your eye on, especially if you're if you're trying to record sound to the pocket to the pocket camera on the gimbal. Just be advised, you may run into that. You can do the infinite roll. I've sort of set it to two, so let me just get it into flashlight mode. And then, as you see here, I can do the infinite roll. Overall, my experience with this is that it is though it is a bit heavy on this side. Now I know a lot of y'all are probably going to ask me about the battery life um, and how do I sort of deal with the battery solution. And at least for gimbals, um, I just use Canon LPE6 batteries. Um, just I would say use the you can use the Wasabi uh, versions that come they come with the charger, so you can at least charge those up as you're swapping them in and out. Um, the other alternative I do is when I know I'm not uh, using the camera and the camera's not in use, what I do is I take one of my V-mount batteries and I plug it into the 12 volt input because that actually, when you plug that in, it actually charges uh, the, the camera's internal battery. So it charges the Canon battery inside of it. So a great alternative for me at least. Overall, um, I think I, I think this is a great setup. I think this will work really well. I love this setup. I think this does exactly what I how I f shoot if I was going to use gimbal work. The only other thing is um, I I have a dual handle system. I need to just find it. Um, it's still I've still got like stuff unpack to unpack and just get uh, situated. Um, so. But I know I have a dual handle somewhere around here, so that's definitely going to help with weight distribution. As y'all can see, it is very easy to power the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera to balance it and set it up and rig it up. Um, overall, I think this is probably the most best ideal situations. Uh, get, I would say definitely get Cine Glass. If you can, get Cine Glass. Um, it'll just be much easier to pull the focus, um, and you can also just do it manually and then you can add the focus motor, which will help off balance uh, the camera out. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care.